What's good, y'all? So, if you're like me and you spend way too much time on TikTok, then you've probably heard the song. Twinkle, twinkle, little. Or this song. A, B, C, D, E, F, U, and your mom. Or this song. I'm mad at Disney, Disney. They tricked me, tricked me. I never found you funny. I never found you entertaining. I never found you smart. I just found you annoying. So a lot of people on TikTok, I've noticed, have created this new genre of music, this new category called the Olivia Rodrigo effect. And I have a lot of thoughts on this. I'm not an Olivia Rodrigo stan, but I have to say, y'all need to put some more respect on Olivia's name because she's a really good songwriter. I think she's a great singer. And she's got some really great qualities about her as an artist that I think is the reason why she's so successful. I think she's a really great lyricist. I mean, she knows her audience and she knows who she's making music for. She writes music that is very honest and authentic to her own experiences as a young woman and a lot of other young women relate to her music and I think that's really great. Something I love about Olivia Rodrigo is her vocal delivery. She does a really good job at expressing her honesty, her authenticity, and her genuine feelings about the matter that she's singing about through her voice. She is a great belter. I love when she just like is fully like in it and completely raw with her vocals and she's not trying to sound perfect and pristine like most pop singers do. She really is able to express herself honestly and still maintain a great quality like in her vocals. And I just can't imagine how you could be so okay now that I'm gone. She reminds me of Hayley Williams in that way, and I know her song Good For You was literally like snatched up by Paramore's publisher. Regardless of that, I think, you know, what I like about Olivia is that she has contributed to this pop punk rock renaissance and pop music, but she does it the right way. Like, she really knows her references, it seems like, and I love her voice. I love the way that she sings. A lot of people were like, oh, Olivia Rodrigo can't sing, based off of like some live performances, which t I never understood because she can sing. And all those clips that I saw on TikTok, they were like, she can't sing, are literally wrong. Like, I don't know what y'all are on. But I saw in the comments that you guys think she sounds bad in this video. It's live. It's always the people who have literally never sang a proper note in their life. Everything is flat, everything is sharp, they don't know anything about music and they're like, she can't sing. Anyway, that's besides the point. Olivia Rodrigo is a really good musician and I think the Olivia Rodrigo effect on TikTok that I've been seeing is a bit misguided. So if I were to put it in my own category, I would just simply call it TikTok music. A lot of these artists tend to use lyrics that will grab people's attention, right? It's usually very on trend, it has something to do with the climate of today, or just words and phrases that you hear a lot on the internet. And I think when people do that, it's just obvious that they're trying to make a song popular on TikTok, whether it's the whole song or the 15 second bit that they're going to post on TikTok relentlessly. And then you go listen to the song and you're like, why does it, why does it not hit the same? It doesn't sound like that. 15 seconds that I enjoyed on TikTok. A lot of people are really competing on TikTok to get people's attention. I think the reason why people are calling this the Olivia Rodrigo effect is simply because she made a pop punk song or two. And so everyone's like, oh, the Olivia Rodrigo effect because she is the face of this pop punk renaissance. She's the most popular, the most well-liked because Olivia Rodrigo isn't the only person who's done this. I mean, MGK has hopped on this new pop punk wave, Willow Smith. So I think that's really the reason why people are calling it the Olivia Rodrigo effect. Um, and of course, like the angsty lyrics, but I think Olivia does angsty lyrics very well in a way that isn't corny or forced or inauthentic. A lot of people have been hopping on this angsty young adult teenage female rage vibe and I totally get it. I love female rage. I, I feel all the time. And a lot of these songs are like breakup songs too. And to that I say, ladies, if you're tired of dealing with men, get you one of these. <laughs> Today's video is in partnership with Lalo. Lalo is a amazing brand that I'm so happy to be working with. They sent me this Sila Cruz um, vibrating 
object. I'm truly, I'm really gonna try to not get demonetized, but also say what I need to say in this video, so wish me luck. Cela Cruz is a sonic massager designed for beginners who are just learning to, you know, get in touch with their body and to learn their bodies and what they like. So if you're someone who fits in that category or if you're just looking for a new massager to incorporate into your bedroom routine, then you should definitely check out Lalo and their toys, especially the Cela Cruz toy. Personally, your girl is single. Your girl is keeping to herself. But I I do I do enjoy this product because, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Doja said, this ain't shit, but Lalo is the shit. That's my man. That's my man right here. <laughs> okay. So yeah, if you're like me and you want to, you know, explore your own body and your own pleasure in your own home within your comfort before you explore with another partner, then you should definitely consider clicking that link in the description to get this Cela Cruz vibrational technology. Speaking of technology, this thing has cruise control like a damn Lambo. Do Lambos have cruise control? I feel like they do. That's something cars have. Anyway, that's not the point. So cruise control is basically when you press down harder, it'll increase vibrations to increase intensity and it's completely automatic, which makes it a lot easier to use when you're, you know, in the moment. It also has Sensonic technology, which allows you to feel all those good vibrations in your yoni so you can get the full amount of pleasure. The Sensonic technology allows you to feel all the stimulation on your body without direct contact. The silicon used to make this product absorbs the vibrations and sends those vibrations back to your pleasure zone for deeper and gentler sensations. And lastly, it's just got a really nice wide mouth so it really like takes up the entire area of your pleasure zone so it can maximize the amount of pleasure that you experience when using it. I think it's great for everybody, especially if you're a beginner or if you've had toys in the past, if you want to use it with a partner or whatever. Um, definitely recommend. Super easy to use and yeah, go check out Lilo. Link in the description. Also, I know I mentioned Paramore. Peep the shirt. If you guys didn't know, I'm a huge Paramore stan. Like, I'm a huge Paramore stan. When it comes to Paramore, I don't play. I don't. Actually, they're touring, and they're only going to, like, the West Coast and, like, the Midwest. So if you're in those parts of America and you want to, you know, help a sister out, maybe I could sleep, sleep in y'all's basement or something. No, but for real, if y'all want me to make a video about Paramore, I will do it. I have, like, so many Paramore shirts. I was, like, contemplating which one I should wear today for the video. I've also got this one. I have, like, at least, like, six. I've seen Paramore probably like three times. Anyway, let's let's move on. <laughs> but before I get into the juicy bits of this video, I think we need to have a talk. Sit down if you're not already sitting, which you probably are. I would really like to take our relationship to the next level. I've noticed that 80% of you are not subscribed. And I just feel like really used. I feel like you guys are just taking from me without committing and I would like to introduce some commitment to this relationship. I'm ready to take this to the next level. I've given so much of myself to you. I just want to feel like you're on board as much as I am. So if you could subscribe, hit that button, that would be great. I just feel like I need this for my own sense of security. So yeah, and go listen to my music. I have a song called I'm a Star that just came out. It's a bop. It's a bop. There's a music video go watch it. <laughs> that being said, let's talk about an artist who I genuinely thought was Olivia Rodrigo when I saw her on my For You page. You make me say, I'm so song number one, Twinkle Twinkle Little Bit. Yes, that is the name of the song. Leah Cates is the singer of this iconic song that has been circulating through TikTok. A lot of people hate it, they hate it. If you go to her TikTok account, most of the comments are pretty negative, which is sad, even though like, okay, listen, if you don't like a song, you don't need to like be mean to people. Like, I just feel like that's not necessary. But the song has been clowned dragged through the mud on TikTok. Not necessarily because of like the singing or the production. The production on this is great. The mixing is good. The mastering is good. Vocal performance is fine. But the lyrics, 
the lyrics. Um, so the chorus is obviously referencing um, sampling Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the, the nursery rhyme. I get what she was trying to do. I get what she was trying to do. I think when you use like any sort of cliche, like counting down in a song using the ABCs or in this case using a nursery rhyme, it's really hard to like win people over with those kinds of things. It has to be like really special and creative and like different for it to not sound corny or contrived. And unfortunately, this came off as corny and contrived and people were just weren't having it. First of all, people on TikTok are f***ing vicious. They don't give a f And if they feel some type of way about your song, they're gonna let you know. Personally, I don't think it's necessary to like send someone death threats and hate and all that stuff just because you don't like a song like if you don't like the song just skip past it i have never in my life seen a song on the internet and been like yeah i don't really like this and then been like you should f never sing again ah! like that's just not it's just not necessary and as someone who makes music themselves like i've definitely gotten that and it's like hey man if you Think I can't sing? That is okay, but you don't have to fool with me. But you don't have to talk about me or treat me mean. I don't have to treat you mean. You don't have to go on a whole rant, uh, literally writing a dissertation on how I'm talentless, I can't sing, my music sucks. I, I mean, listen, as someone who makes video essays about other artists, I have dug my own grave, okay, when it comes to people judging my sh Someone has made a whole video on how my music sucks, basically, so I get it. I get it. And by critiquing other people's music, like, I've definitely- this is the life I've chosen for myself as a fellow musician, but I also recognize that making music is f hard and not everybody can do it, and it's always the people who don't make music who want to talk the most sh So, I would say give Leah Kate a break. Don't go to her shows and make fun of her. I've been seeing a lot of TikToks where people will literally just be like doing that annoying thing where they're like watching Netflix or like playing Temple Run while they're in the crowd to like show blatant disrespect for the artist. And I think that's really stupid. I have a whole video idea mapped out in my head about Gen Zers being the worst concert goers. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. Twinkle Twinkle Little Bitch. It's not my favorite. Like I'm not listening to this shit on my own and I don't really like blame these artists because I think a lot of people are doing these types of songs so they can get people's attention on TikTok. It's really hard to grab people's attention nowadays and if you make a song that's kind of polarizing that will grab people's attention and so I think with this twinkle twinkle little bitch thing she just wanted to like make a song that would you know catch people's ears and make them go oh what is this and you know, it's not the first time an artist has done this because if you use a sound or a sample, whatever that's familiar, people will automatically gravitate towards it because they're like, oh, I know this. I've heard this before. And when something is familiar, it's a lot more appealing. Now, unfortunately, this song kind of missed the mark on the appealing part, but I get where she was coming from, I guess. I get what she was trying to do. Just another narcissist. She uses the word narcissist, which I think is very like common nowadays to call people narcissists that's kind of like a buzzword that people use a lot when they're describing someone they just don't like i've noticed that colloquial lyrics have become very common on tiktok because again with that familiarity thing if you hear a phrase or a word that's trendy or familiar it'll catch your ear and be like oh like what is that let me listen to the rest of it so i mean she uses the word narcissist like i said and she has another song called 10 things i hate about you not related to the movie her own words and she uses a lot of these kinds of like catchy gen z tiktok type words and phrases that a lot of us know like she says something about jeweling in this and she talks about like getting the ick and stuff like that which is very popular on the internet especially tiktok amongst the girlies honestly this song is not half bad i mean i i enjoyed it better than twinkle twinkle little bitch i'm gonna be honest and when i watched the music video i was like oh my god this music video is amazing like she even inspired inspired my hair. Her and Olivia Rodrigo. They have a very similar aesthetic. I will say this. That's also why I literally thought it was Olivia Rodrigo on stage. When I saw her on my For You page for the first time, I was like, oh, I've never heard this Olivia Rodrigo song before. She sounds different here. I wonder what's, what's going on. Oh, it's not her. Okay, that's why. But the music video is great. I love the styling. I love the set design, the lighting. I love that it was shot on film. Like the music video was really great. I think Leah K has a great like artist 
persona or like artist aesthetic. But when I watched the genius interview for the song, it gave me pause. The lyrics gave me pause. I mean, I literally had to like pause the video because I was so taken aback by some of the things that she said. No hate, no hate. I just, when she said, Your friends must suck if they think you're cool. A sloppy drunk obsessed with his jewel grows me out. Now I've got the ache and I've got a list of why you don't get to fuck me. I had to like take a moment. I think the problem with lyrics like this is that it tends to age the song before it's even properly been aged. Like it'll be six months and it's like, oh god, the song is like so mid 2021. I don't think that's great for longevity when it comes to being an artist, especially if you're up and coming. I understand like you kind of you kind of have to like get people's attention to draw them in and then you can focus on longevity, but I just feel like when it comes to lyrics like this, it can really turn people off and be like, "Oh my god, you're trying so hard to sound relatable and to sound like you're a Gen Z person on the TikTok and you know what the kids are doing. It's a it's a fine line between cringe and clever. Like I said with the nursery rhyme stuff, it clearly didn't land with this song from a lot of people, but Melanie Martinez does this all the time. I mean, nursery rhymes and childhood aesthetic is very big for her. That's like her whole brand is like baby. Her brand is baby. And Melanie Martinez is probably a more seasoned songwriter. She's been around for a while and she really knows how to write a good song. So I, I don't know if it's fair to fully like compare the two, but Melanie Martinez does a really good job at incorporating nursery rhymes without it sounding cringy or corny because she does it in a way that makes sense and that is like truly authentic to her experience because the purpose behind these nursery rhymes and childlike themes and aesthetics in her music is that she is showing her audience that all the struggles and the experiences that she has had that she talks about in her music stems from her childhood and the issues that she had in her childhood. So when there's a lack of context and sometimes these lyrics can come off as a bit forced and corny if there's no like reason. I guess you could argue that Leah Kate used the twinkle twinkle little star sample to express her frustration with this person who is immature but i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm reaching this whole thing kind of reminds me of the lael hansen experience on tiktok that happened like a year ago this girl lael hansen who is also a youtuber made this viral tiktok where she's like i hate my life nobody listens to my music because i won't sell my soul to the illuminati and everyone was like girl shut the fuck up and in the campaign for her everybody hates me listen to my music thing she was like my best friend even hates me see look at our text messages you see she hates me and um leah kate kind of did the same thing on her tiktok she exposes some text messages from her ex-boyfriend to show that that this song is based off of real experiences, a real life event. She talks about the meanings of her songs at her shows and in her genius interviews. So although it seems that her songwriting is authentic to her real life experiences, it's just not really, it's not landing. It's not hitting the mark. I have a feeling based off of her music video for 10 Things I Hate About You that her label really wants to capitalize off of Olivia Rodrigo's success. And they're like, oh, there's this girl who's doing pop pop punk inspired music and she's got dark hair and is like super angsty so we also need a dark haired angsty early 20s late teens girl to uh be our olivia rodrigo you know what i'm saying it happens all the time copycats and pop music happen every generation wishing leah k all the best y'all should be a bit nicer to this woman even if you don't like the song you don't have to be mean moving on a b c d f u and your mom and your car and your friends or whatever she says so a b c d f u by gail with a y i like that as madison with a y i can relate this song also was dragged through the mud i know this song is more well liked than twinkle twinkle little bitch i feel there are people who have been in the comments being like i like this song wait this song is actually kind of good though and to that i say like what you like let people like things let people enjoy things personally i don't enjoy the song but that isn't like an objective thing like just because i'm not gonna listen to the song it doesn't mean that it's a bad song okay i think this song really encompasses like the perfect 
pop formula. I'm not saying the song is perfect, but it definitely incorporates a lot of like pop cliches, like the gang vocals in the chorus, A, B, C, D, F, in the drop like it's so like we're making a pop song you know what i mean and that's totally fine and i think that's why it appeals to certain people is if, if you like that like kind of top 40 curated music then you're gonna like this song the reason why people didn't like this song is also because of the lyrics i think the lyrics just they're not hitting they're attempting to be angsty and authentic and like yeah i'm an angry girl and fuck this guy you guys just don't know him like i do he's not five years old but he pees the bed we've been on four dates he shot himself on three of them and it's too soon to ask him if we're more than friends so for now he's my one in a million Ow! <laughs> Everybody wants to make a Gen Z TikTok viral pop punk breakup fuck you anthem. Like literally Leah Kate has a song called Fuck You Anthem. So it's not it's not it's not just a theory. It's real. I get that, you know, it's a very angsty time. I think female rage is the vibe right now and I love to see it. I just think this song is not resonating with folks because it doesn't come off as authentic. And I think that's where I get hung up with the Olivia Rodrigo comparison because, yes, Gail also has that pop punk vibe to her music. But Olivia Rodrigo takes it a step further and actually makes the songs resonate with people on a really deep and intimate level. Whereas I feel like ABCDFU only kind of skims the surface and only appeals to this surface level emotion that is anger and heartbreak. It's very easy to write a song about heartbreak and it's very easy to write a song about anger because those feelings are very accessible. They're very loud and they're obvious and so I think it's really easy to be like oh, I'm just gonna write a song that sounds angry I have some aggressive guitar chords and gang vocals and belting and you know you can kind of mix those ingredients together to make an angry sounding song but the most important ingredient is the honest truth and the honest feeling that comes through and sometimes that can be hard to convey with a pop song that's meant to go in the top 40. Heartbreak and anger can appeal to everybody. We all know what it's like to feel that and when you are playing off an emotion that is easy to convey you really have to like make sure that you're doing it in a way that is real and not just trying to like capitalize off of a vibe or a feeling that you know people will buy into. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's why ABCDFU has garnered a lot of hatred. Same with the other songs I mentioned previously by Leah Kate. But most importantly, the thing about Gale is the fact that people didn't like the song, so they dug deeper for more information to just kind of shit on her, basically. And it turns out she's an industry plant. Now, I have mixed emotions on the term industry plant. I can make a whole video about that if you want me to, because I truly don't believe they exist. But in this scenario, it was a little fishy. So she was on TikTok and she responded to a comment that was like, oh, you should make a song about the alphabet or you should make a song incorporating the alphabet. And so she writes the song like right after that or at least that's what you know the optics are that's what they want you to think but it turns out this commenter was actually a marketing manager for Atlantic Records so they probably just were like oh you have the song called ABCDFU we should do this TikTok campaign where one of your fans comments, oh, you should make a song on the spot incorporating the alphabet. And then she writes ABCDFU on camera, supposedly. And that is like the whole marketing thing is that she just made the song on the spot. When in reality, Atlantic Records probably knew she had this song for a while. They probably had her work with writers to make this song. And so they wanted to use TikTok as a way to market the, the song, which I don't blame them for. But when you do something that is staged like this, people on TikTok are not going to accept it and they're not going to embrace it with open arms because people hate inauthenticity. If there's anything that needs to be taken away from this video, it's that people hate inauthenticity, especially on TikTok where they're hypercritical. So that industry plant element to this song really doesn't help her case because people really hate industry plants on the internet. Like, even if your music is amazing, like someone like Claro, for example, I love her music 
and people hated her for no reason just because she was a supposed industry plant which she isn't but whenever there's rumors of being an industry plant it never helps but I also think that it helps in a way that's like all PR is good PR even if it's bad. This situation reminds me of the Tramp Stamps which is also a pop punk influenced uh, group on TikTok that rose to fame simply because they were speculated to be industry plans and a lot of people found their music to be unauthentic because they kind of had this forced feminist like we hate men but we're white women and we're kind of gay but not really but we want you to think we're gay like you know what i'm saying it was one of those it was one of those because one of the songs is like we're tired of dating jacobs and brady's Blah. but like one of them is literally dating a jacob brady so it's like you don't even mean that you're just trying to you're just trying to appeal to the tiktok masses the gen z masses and it's not working gen z you know it, it's hard to manipulate gen z i will say this much especially when it comes to like music industry celebrity entertainment stuff like gen z will cut through the bullshit i think a part of that is just because like we don't really care about radio as much anymore and radio is not as big of a, a deal when it comes to music culture which i want to make a video about that like why is there no song of the summer it's because radio is dead but when you try to appeal to a certain audience in a really forced way, it just like doesn't, it doesn't work. But hey, I'm talking about the Tram Stamps, Gail, Leah, Kate, all these artists who have gotten a lot of like vitriol on the internet, but like would they be talked about right now if it weren't for these songs? No. I think a strategy that is coming up in this TikTok era is like making songs that are very polarizing or just borderline shitty and then like getting people's attention but releasing a song that's not borderline shitty and pretty pretty decent i feel like leah k is kind of doing this i mean twinkle twinkle little bitch i'm sure when she wrote that song she was like yeah i know people are gonna hate this like there's gonna be people who think this is absolutely atrocious but then she follows up with 10 things i hate about you and that's a pretty decent song i know i kind of talked about the lyrics and how i'm not a fan but i still think that song is better than twinkle twinkle little bitch so in a way, it does help because that video, that music video has like over a million views and everyone in the comments is really nice about it. So I think that's a strategy in and of itself. The last artist I want to talk about is a artist that goes by the name of Salem Elise. I believe that's how you pronounce her last name. So she has a song called I'm Mad at Disney. She also has a song where she's like, I'm 2020 done with 2021. Pandemic season three with Omicron cast as the lead and not to mention global temps as high as everybody's rent. But hey, at least we got the backs. Gained 10 pounds in quarantine and more. Marched for what we believe. Marched for what we believe. Marched for what we believe. Um, she also has a song about like crypto and NFTs. I didn't know this was by the same artist. I really didn't. Maybe it's just my stupid lizard brain that has no kind of attention span. Or maybe it's the fact that these songs kind of sound so generic to the point that it could literally be anybody. I think it's the Billie Eilish, Halsey type vocals that were like making me think that because a lot of pop artists all have like the same vocal delivery now and they have like this Billie Eilish type of singing. Welcome to my kitchen. We've got bananas and avocados. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to my kitchen. We have bananas. In These songs all kind of fit into that top 40 made to go viral songs. And aside from how the song sounds sonically, lyrically, it also has the same like cliches and colloquial lyrics like I talk about. I mean, she literally has a song called like Crypto Boy. Jeez, one more time. And it's guaranteed we're not fucking tonight. I don't care about your crypto. I get it. I get that you want to make a song that is on topic with the trends, finger on the pulse. However, nobody wants to hear about crypto. And I think she knows that. I think she's aware because the song is literally about how she doesn't want to hear this man talk about crypto and NFTs. So why would you make a song about it? I honestly... I believe she does this on purpose because all of her songs kind of sound like this and have the same themes lyrically and 
are very similar. I'm 2020 done with 2021. Need I say more? Like, you're literally talking about the year that you made the song. So it's like... <sighs> Obviously, her brand as an artist is to talk about current events. I might have scolded, scolded, they voted, voted all our reproductive rights away. <laughs> Which is an interesting take, I must say. I Mad at Disney was like, I think, the first big song that really got people's attention on TikTok. Out of all the songs, I think this song is like the least egregious, if I do say so myself. I mean, again, not listening to this shit on my own, but it's like, at least the song has a purpose, especially on TikTok, because all the TikTok Disney cosplay bitches are making videos to this shit. And it's like, okay, she made a song for the Disney cosplayers, and I think that's admirable. I think that's like, if a song has a purpose, it has a place, I'm not mad at it. The song does have like a message, you know, in the Genius interview where she talks about the lyrical content of the song, she says that she wrote the song during a time in her life where she was just starting out her, in her career. She just moved to LA and she realized that it's not all fairy tales and butterflies and rainbows like everybody makes it out to be. And she also talks about how she's tired of these stereotypes for women in Disney movies where it's like this damsel in distress and oh no, I've lost my shoe and all I know how to to do is talk to birds and sing and wallow uh. and it's like bitch you can fight your own battles slay your own dragons like it's 2021 <laughs> okay princesses know how to slay so you know i get that i love that she's got a message she also has a song called hey siri and again just like whatever is popping whatever is like a part of the zeitgeist she's gonna make a song about it i actually think the song is pretty good it gives like billy eilish vibes it's like a chill acoustic song and it's like very existential it's kind of about like being addicted to your phone to the point where you're literally asking siri like siri what is the meaning to life that's a cool concept i like that but yeah i think salem elise along with the other artists that i talked about she is doing the classic tiktok go viral formula which is to make a song that is catchy and is familiar sounds like a song you've heard before or an artist you've heard before that incorporates colloquial lyrics and it can go either way from being cringy corny to clever and you know finger on the pulse like i said but unfortunately it seems that the pulse has been slightly missed it seems these artists cannot find the vein which is unfortunate. None of these songs are produced poorly. All these girls can sing. Like, nothing is bad. But it's just like, once you've reached the requirements for what a song should sound like in terms of professionalism, if there's no authenticity to it, it just falls flat. And these artists are not the only ones who are making songs to appeal to the TikTok algorithm. I mean, Yummy by Justin Bieber. It's obvious that song was made for TikTok to make little TikTok dances where all you do is move your arms and shit. Sweetest Pie by Dua Lipa and Megan Thee Stallion. That song was trending on TikTok for a minute. And when I heard that ding part in the song, I was like, oh, that was made for TikTok. Like they strategically put that in the song so people would make TikToks to it. If you ever incorporate like a catchy element or lyric that fits within a 15 second clip, it's gonna go viral on TikTok. Like that's the formula. Um, I wanted there to be like a little like thing in it because I wanted people to make TikToks where they could like transition into it. And I thought that if there's a little thing that would like be a cue and people did make TikToks like that. So I'm really happy about that. There's certain elements that show up with every viral TikTok song or at least every song that is meant to go viral on TikTok. I think a great uh, case study, if you will, is XO Brooklyn on TikTok. She made a song called My Crown and everyone was like, Ugh, this is TikTok music at its finest. Like this is so trash but the girl made it as a joke like it was literally a social experiment and it fucking worked and that just goes to show you that tiktok music is a real genre and people are actively trying to make songs that sound exactly like this just so they can go viral on tiktok because anyone can be it a pop star nowadays with tiktok if you want to help me become a pop star and make my shit go viral on tiktok you know you don't have to do that please you don't have to make tiktok dances um because i know you won't but you know if you want to just like go on tiktok and like eat a bowl of cereal on camera and play i'm a star in the background that would be that would be appreciated i'm not gonna lie you could literally be putting lip gloss on drinking water <laughs> 
Simple as that. Simple as that. <laughs> anyway, let me know what y'all think of this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Any songs that you think fit in this category? Yeah. Thank you so much, Lilo, for partnering with me on this video.